page 55 chapter 4 subsection women and language quote women the gatherers in the archaic hunter gatherer equation were under much greater pressure to develop language than were their male counterparts hunting the pre uh, pre prerogative of the larger male place the premium on strength stealth and stoic waiting the hunter was able to function quite well on a very limited number of linguistic signals as it's still the case among hunting peoples of the kong of the maku for gatherers the situation was different those women with the largest repertoire of communicable images of foods and their sources and secrets of preparation were unquestionably placed in a position of advantage language may well have arisen as a mysterious power possessed largely by women women who spent much more of their waking time together and usually talking than did men women who in all societies are seen as group-minded in contrast to the lone male image which in the romanticized version of the alpha male of the primate troop the linguistic accomplishments of women were driven by a need to remember and describe to each other a variety of locations and lands landmarks as well as numerous numerous taxonomic and structural details about plants to be sought or avoided the complex morphology of the natural world propelled the evolution of language towards the modeling of the world be beheld to this day a taxicomic description of a plant is a joy scene thrill to read quote shub two to six feet in high glabrous throughout leaves mostly opposite summon threes or uppermost alternate seesaw linear lanicolette or lanicolette acute or accumulate flowers sol solitary in axils yellow with aroma pedicillate calyx Campolate petal soon cococcus above it, end quote. and so on for many lines. The linguistic linguistic depth women attained as gatherers eventually led to a monstrous discovery: the discovery of agriculture. I call it monstrous because of its consequences women realized that they could simply grow a restricted number of plants as a result they learned the needs needs of only those few plants embraced the se sedentary lifestyle and began to forget the rest of nature they had once known as well at that point the retreat from the natural world began and the dualism of humanity versus nature was born as we will soon see one of the places where the old god goddess culture died katal hayuk in present day anatolian anatolian turkey is the very place where agriculture may have first arisen at places like katal hayuk and jericho humans and their dominus, domesticated plants and animals became for the first time physically and psychologically separate from the life of untamed nature and the howling unknown use of hallucinogens can only be sanctions sanctioned in hunting and gathering societies when agriculturists use these plants they are unable to get up at dawn the morning after and go hold hold the fields at that point corn and grain became corn and grain become gods gods that symbolize domestically and hard labor 
domesticity and hard labor. These replace the old goddesses of plant-induced induced ecstasy. Agriculture begins with it, the potential for overpopulation, which leads to excess wealth, hoarding, and trade. Trade leads to cities. Cities isolate their inhabitants from the natural world. Paradoxically, more efficient utilization of plant resources through agriculture led to a breaking away from the symbiotic relationship that had bound human beings to nature. I do not mean this metamorphic, meta, uh, metaphorically. The ennui of modernity is the consequence of the disrupted quasi-symbiotic relationship between ourselves and Gaian nature. Only a resolution of this relationship is in some form is capable of carrying us into a full appreciation of our birthright and sense of ourselves as complete human beings.